And then a few years later, we keep on going, her husband calls me for a job at Faith Life Center, which is in Eastvale. But they said uh, the keyboardist it, it went on tour with Charlie Puth. Uh, then I was like, so I have to fill in whose shoes? <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness. Uh, I was a drummer for a long time, so I didn't know too much what an MD did, does, you know? So I, I just kind of was like, it's fake it till I make it in a way. And, and then I got a chance to just work on getting resources and all, so yeah. You may not be needing to fill Charlie Puth's role, but you may be in the same boat Rolando used to be in, wondering what the heck an MD is. In this video, I'm going to unpack exactly what a music director is and explain the essentials of the role an MD fills with the help of my new friend Rolando from Inland Hills Church. So whether you are an MD, a wannabe MD, or looking to get an MD for your worship band, and this video will teach you everything you need to know about music directing in worship ministry. Let's dive in. My name is Rolando Zamora and uh, I'm a musical director for Inland Hills Church. And I've been MDing and on staff for the past four years, uh, working with uh, the music department, working with different ministries. The job definitely entails a lot of things for sure. My role is making sure that I deliver what the worship leaders vision with alongside with the pastor and worship pastor and the lead pastor does. So making sure that each and every person knows uh, what to do. So I do a lot of the production, I do a lot of like Ableton programming, and our worship leaders pretty much get a chance to uh, entail like the keys, making sure which song selections are, are chosen for the week. So I have to make sure that I back up that vision behind them as an MD. I play keys, I play bass, I can MD from uh, drums sometimes, which is pretty awesome. It's not, not one of the easiest parts <laughs> as far as a drummer, but I think uh, my main uh, instrument would be keys because from that I can be able to run tracks at the same time. That's how our uh, Ableton sessions are set up. Like for tonight, we're actually setting up for bass. So I'm on bass and Dean. So from time to time, it just changes uh, on a weekly occasion. So yeah. The basic job of a music director is to direct the band. It's that simple. There are a few prerequisites to MDing though that you will want to be mindful of. Your worship band has to utilize in-ear monitors. If you don't have in-ear monitors, it will be really awkward when everyone in the congregation can hear your music director calling out directions to the band. But once you have in-ears, you'll want to also implement click and tracks. There are a few ways to do this, but here at Churchfront, we love using Ableton Live, which will be the click and track software covered in this video. Then as a music director, you'll be using a talkback mic, which is just a fancy term for a mic that is routed only to the in-ears of the band, not the main PAs. You direct the band in a few ways. You can guide members of the band by calling out chords, by calling out song sections, and by giving advice on specific parts unique to certain instruments. You're the voice that is leading the band. So let's it out in the key of C. Here we go. If you run a click and track, you'll be responsible for telling the band where to go during certain sections, like looping pads or communicating when you may or may not be repeating song sections. An effective music director is also in charge of organizing and making sure that the band shows up prepared. This includes things like organizing chord charts, running planning center, and communicating the flow of the service to your band members during rehearsal. Right into announcements. So into the announcements, we'll go into Christmas party next week. So there's no service. So no, no worship next week. Let's go ahead and take a deeper look at some of the MD's responsibilities with Ableton Live. What's your kind of philosophy and how you're going about setting up tracks or like I see you're using arrangement view. Um, sure. Yeah, if you see this view, I'm pretty much an arrangement view right now. So we've been using this view for the past let's say two years. Uh, we originally were starting off in session view and it worked for a you know good good while but once we started that uh, we had to implement like spontaneous moments and we had to implement people uh, coming in on stage we it made it easy and made it you know where that we needed to go into arrangement view so we can kind of see linearly where we're at pretty much and at any time I can have the control as an MD to learn where to trigger certain certain parts or certain sections like prayer time, uh, if I need to repeat you know, a worship leader's uh, verse or if she wants to do a talking point, uh, I have the ability 
ability to even on Ableton come in there and just do an actual trigger so it can loop back and forth and then I can manually trigger whenever that moment you know arises pretty much. Ableton Live is an extremely powerful tool. Like Rolando mentioned, Ableton Live has two different views. You have your arrangement view and your session view. Session view is block styled while arrangement view is a linear timeline. I find that when you start working with more complicated Ableton sets, it is much easier to use arrangement view, but this is just personal preference. Rolando prepares the Ableton sets every week for worship, and as a music director, this will probably fall into your responsibilities. There are a few things that are really nice about using Ableton Live. Using an interface with two or more outputs or using audio networking like the Dante Network, you can separate outs for different types of tracks. Every week, Rolando separates his main instruments, his drum tracks, his guitar tracks, and his bass and synth tracks to different outputs. These outputs can then be controlled individually from the back of house mixer during audio playback. Ableton also allows for simple tempo automation. That means that using tempo tracks, you can control the tempo of Ableton and your click. So each song will have a unique tempo that will automatically change when that song is cued. Any effective Ableton set will also have an MP3 file of the actual song. And this is very useful for guide for demonstrating song parts during rehearsal so that band members who may be confused on the way a song is supposed to go can listen to the actual mp3 during rehearsal along with this you can implement looping pads a looping pad will play in whatever song key you choose for however long you want it to loop for and this is extremely useful during parts of prayer during the initial greeting after a first song or for different refrains after songs. The music director's job during a looping pad is to guide the band with what chords to play, whether to build or not build, and also to guide them to let them know when the next song is going to start or how long to continue playing for. Then on top of all of this with Ableton Live, you can bounce out certain sections of the song or the whole song with the click and tracks included. This may be a bit overwhelming, but that's okay because it was for us too. If you want to learn how to use Ableton Live for your worship ministry or for help implementing other latest tech in your worship ministry, even if you serve at a small to mid-sized church, then check out worshipleaderschool.com, which is linked down below. What are the key things you do to try to ensure your team shows up prepared, they know what they're doing, like. Sure. I think, I think you said it best. I think preparation is huge on coming in because even if you know your parts well, you're, you're setting up yourself, you know, for an actual fun experience. Having the ability to, for me as an MD, to lock in and send what we envision during the week and send them all resources, I think best prepares our musicians. So one of the things that we use is planning center course uh, we send in our mp3s with our worship leaders making sure we go through them during the week and then my job is to make sure that I once I finish with the Ableton session I write talking points to them so I send all everything any detail that needs to happen within the service let's say if a track is starting with uh, an interlude instead of an actual intro I have to also make sure that they know that and also before they come into the actual you know place planning center is any church's friend but it is a especially useful for an effective music director. Within Planning Center, you can store chord charts, MP3 files, click and track files, and the worship set plan. Using these tools is incredibly important for communication, and as an MD, you wanna make sure every member of the band has the tools to be prepared for Sunday. Rolando also prints off chord charts, especially for students playing on the team, and highlights certain sections. He keeps them labeled and organized. This is just one more step into making sure your worship band is prepared for excellence. Another tool that Rolando uses to keep organized is the Band app, a website and app that is made specifically for bands. It functions similarly to any other post-styled app like Facebook or Slack, where there are boards you can post to and you can have a network of people. This makes it easy for Rolando to communicate long form to members of specific teams, to describe the flow of the service, or to emphasize specific parts certain band members need to practice. And then right before practice or rehearsal, after doing all of these organization techniques, Rolando actually goes through the entire flow of the service, noting specific things band members need to be wary of. This level of preparedness from a music director is essential when it comes to making sure that your band is on the same page so that you can be excellent. What are the top three elements of like being an effective music director, like in a rehearsal and a service setting? Hmm. Yeah, I think uh, the one that comes, uh, that pops out of my head is 
being calm within the storm is, is huge. I think the ability to be a pivotal part of a band, but being incognito behind the scenes is so huge. So I think uh, to best prepare myself, even when before I go into the venue, I think it's so huge to kind of have the ability to just uh, have a picture already of what's gonna happen way before you're even up there. And kind of knowing and reading the room, uh, depending who you're playing with. So like, let's say if you have your, your, your a team, you know, keeping it simple and just kind of seeing, hey, like, uh, how am I going to support this rehearsal? In, in what way am I going to communicate this band? And uh, per se, let's say if you have like students or you have uh, a kids or depending on whatever age, like a more of a younger age, then you have to be a little bit more communicated, uh, communicative as far as working with them and saying, hey, you know, your ability is there. We're going to keep on working on this part and let's go back to that section A or let's go, let's repeat this four times. Let's do this intro again. Let's, and kind of calling out the chords a little bit more rather than also like, like compared to a pro, you know, they already know it. So you don't have to specifically say it, but kind of just being there and running the dynamic and the feel of how everyone's playing at. So if everything sounds, you know, cohesive and smooth, I think one of the things is uh, kind of stepping back and being kind of on point of what's coming next and being like kind of diligent of calling like, hey, this is a new song coming up, guys. We're gonna be in the key of A. Definitely uh, knowing that uh, everything is going uh, well, but not also letting go of the uh, you know of the moment of where the band is going at because that's where you're an MD. That's why you're there to support them in the first place. So yeah. So now let's take a look at Rolando directing in action. So there is it starts on the six minor, going to three to D sharp E, A. So you're talking about the, the walk down, right? Are you playing that? I'm playing that. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm playing it. I'm doing it. As you can see, Rolando pays so much attention to everything going on around him. As the music director at our church, Mission Lakewood, this was my biggest takeaway. I find myself constantly struggling to pay attention to the whole band, especially when I don't know my parts on the keys super well. Music directing requires a lot of attention. Rolando is prepared for worship. He knows what he needs to do. And this is super important when it comes to directing because the more prepared you are, the easier it will be to aid and direct your team. But really, that is the essentials of being a music director in worship ministry. Really, the biggest thing to remember is that as the music director, you are entirely responsible for, well, directing the band. You keep everyone together, and in your planning and style of directing, you are also exhibiting the values of your leadership. You also have to be attentive and aware of everything going on in the whole band, not just your own parts. But do remember to have fun, and do remember why you are music directing in the first place. You are here to worship, so do that first and foremost. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you lead a small to mid-sized church and want to increase excellence and engagement in worship, then check out worshipleaderschool.com where we have in-depth training, coaching, and a community to help you build a thriving worship ministry. We'll see you in the next video.